Welcome to the third lecture of the course Metal Additive Manufacturing. We are discussing about reverse engineering in this week. We have discussed about the reverse engineering process, the various steps and stages, why do we need reverse engineering, how do we justify it as a legitimate and legal technology. We have seen what are kinds of the contact and non-contact scanners. In this lecture, it is a laboratory demonstration where I will take you into the laboratory where we have the Steenbacher Comet 3D 5M scanner and we will have a look over the scanning process, how do we use this scanner. So, this is a 3D scanner that is kept at Medtech facility IIT Kanpur. You can see the sticker that is an ISO 13485 compliant sticker IITK MDT EMD 3MD009. So, whatever we scan through this subject, we get the real data of that object. This is the scanner machine that you can see is Sternbacher German based Comet L3D 5mm. So, there are two versions were available when this was purchased 3m and 5m. Now, we have multiple other versions. So, 5m means 5 megapixel here. That means 5 million points per second it can record 5 megapixel. Majorly it has two lenses, one is camera which is a 60 frames per second data capture camera. So, this is the object that we are going to scan today. This is also known as the 3D scanning uh, specimen object. This object you can see it has curvature, the straight surfaces, it is having pocket, slots, dome, cavity dome, corners, fillet, radius. So, we will try to use this object to scan the different kinds of the intricities of the scanning process. Now, if time, sometimes the object is to be cleaned, then PC5021B cleaner is used so that we remove all the dust particles and the object is completely clean to be scanned. Sometimes the object is also shiny like this is also aluminum, so it is shiny, so it does not capture the light, it, the uh, data is not captured co properly. So, we use a developer which is PD5031B which is a white colored char coated developer, we spray it over the object so that the refractive index does not come into play. Now, we have the second major part of the 3D scanner equipment setup which is a rotary table. This rotary table is controlled by the controller box. This is also a steam controller box. So, the data that we put or that we get from here is obtained in real frame. So, this helps us to visualize the object. You can see a red dot here, this indicates the object is exactly placed close to this point. So, it has to be placed close to the center. This is the major concern to set up the scanner. So, we have kept the object here. You can see two dots here. So, these dots are offset from the center. To put it in the center exactly, we have to adjust the alignment of the scanner. To capture the object correctly, it has to be kept as close to center or as close to the center of the rotary table and also the two dots which is the focus of the light coming from the scanner camera that is to be adjusted close to the center. So, we can adjust the head of the scanner. So, we have also got a tripod stand that helps us to lock the scanner at right position. So, first is this broad positioning. So, close to the center it is focused here. It has to coincide as close to the center as possible. 
So, we can see this in the screen itself that it is coincided closer. Now, we have come close to the uh, computer screen and we have seen that the frames which are being produced, the fringes of the frames which are being produced or being put on the object, we could see that. You can see this cross, the intersection point of the cross is the center of the scanner. Next is, we need to open the software. It is provided with a software known as Colin 3D 2.1.0. It is starting. The license key is provided in the form of a dongle. So, we get this as a part of the setup that we get. See, without that dongle, the scanner will not start or will not be interfaced with the computer or the laptop. There are certain pre settings which are to be taken care. Number one is the service projects. So, we will put certain or set certain parameters here about the power, about the general project that we are going to open. Then measurement project is the object that is to be scanned, a project on that has to be opened. When we open it, we go to the create option in the right. When we click it, it opens a new window frame and it asks the file name. The file name, we, what we wish, we can try to open. Because it is initial, I think it is taking some time to open. So, now it is opened. So, it is asking. So, we have options in the comet tab here. When we click to the measurement here, it asks the file name that is to be put for this project. So, we can put test specimen or some file name here. T 3 is the name put here. The extension would be dot sc 3 d underscore mp. We have saved this. Now, a new project is opened. You can see the object on the screen only now. So, we have position that is to be filled now. We have axis control as well in which rotation could be controlled. Rotation is we kept at 0 0 only. So, position is to be set. So, to have minimum uh, 36 uh, readings, we can uh, have 360 by 10 that each 10 degree it will keep on recording the data. So, according to the intricacy of the object that is there and according to the kind of the uh, or the time limit that we have, we can have this. So, you can see if I divided by 15, it will keep on, it is divided 360 by 15 that at 24, 48, 72 it will start taking the, taking the readings. Then we go next, it selects that option, we then we go again next. It will ask about the current sensor temperature is out of the calibrated temperature range, so do you do not want to do anyway. So, we say ok, yes, we can start it. So, it is now showing the fringes of the light. Now, back black lines that you can see here, this is the difference between frame and the camera. So, 60 frames per second is the rate. So, it initializes and it merges the two objects. So, down there in the status bar and above there in the leaf bar, you can see the system is going on, it goes 72 percent, 100 percent. So, two measurements have completed now. So, you can see there exactly in the status bar down there that the scanning is happening at each rotation. So, it is showing field here. So, that means, when it is trying to merge the initial and the recent scan, it is not able to merge. So, the scanning is happening now. And the scanner is started, it has started stack scanning now the object. So, it is trying to connect 
the frames the previous one and the recent one. It is trying it keep on, keeps on trying to uh, align and capture the data simultaneously. So, 5 up to 15 measurements are completed. Now, data acquisition, data alignment, mass generation were the steps. So, acquisition and alignment is going on hand in hand. Manual alignment is almost going on. We can also do some more detailed alignment after the data acquisition is completed when all the scanning happens throughout. So, as we discussed the 3D scanner's main purpose is to turn a physical object into digital one. The scanner gathers records data on the precise size and shape of the object. So, it is important for digital manufacturing and it is crucial for the recent industrial revolution that we have. So, the scanner that we are using here uses blue light to capture the image of the physical object. So, we can see while the scanning is going on, we can see the number of scan it has taken, you can see the area down there, the different rectangles are being built, see it is a rotary table surface area. So, modifying product designs can increase its value, 3D scanner is, of a, is a great tool to use this. So, in this case we can keep on doing span and we can keep on zooming in, zoom out when the scanning is going on. So, I just wish you to see the real time data and real time data collection. So, I am not pausing the video. So, 14 readings, not 14, 9 reading has now been taken out of the 15. You can see that at the status bar, the yellow status bar up there. This is a non-contact 3D scanner that produce uh, the st structured light. So, we can have laser or light based radiations and then use a camera and a receiver to capture its reflection. So, the point cloud of geometrical shapes of the object, object or the surface is produced using this. So, it gives us everything in x, y and z coordinates of each point on the surface of the each point. For most of the objects, the single scan is not uh, suggestible. So, we are need to have the additional measurements, we need to have the measurements at different orientations like we are doing right now. So, full scanning of the object only then is obtained. So, depending upon the resolution of the camera, each line is scanned that comprises of several dots that will be spaced apart by a specific pitch distance. So, these scan data are combined using the triangulation method, the that is the principle of the operation of the scanner. So, it brings it into the common reference system that is what we call as alignment. So, this is how it applies to the digital models which are developed by the 3D printing. So, now we are very close, 13th measurement of the 15th is taken now. The technique or the principle is triangulation method, but 3D scanner project a series of linear light patterns only. So, the fringes are always linear, that is why triangulation method comes. So, the angle, the distance of the object from the scanner, which is generally 750 mm, that is the recommended distance, that is known as also known as the field of view, is uh, set accordingly. This is how it works. So, the margin of each line in this pattern uh, that is created that is through the fringes, uh, figure out how far the object or the item or the specific surface or the point is from the scanner. So, the data from the fringe images is then recorded by the scanner's camera in a single measurement. So, now 15th measurement is going on. So, the status bar, the yellow status bar up there is showing that 15th measure that is, is going on. 
now it is completed yes it is showing the following measurements were acquired while the sensor was out. So, at certain points you can see the data is missed wherever you see green color it is correct otherwise we have we have to align it properly. So, let us process the data there is a data processing bar up there we click that data processing bar menu bar we have various tools here in the selection tab we have lasso tool lasso tools means we can cut using this tool the, the non required or unwanted area. So, we definitely should delete the points which are not required otherwise the file size will be so heavy that it would not be easy to handle it. So, we select this and try to clip everything use, using clip tool that is given in the selection tab. So, it is a clearer data. So, we can still clip using lesser tool and then clip the red area it is showing that if I now click on the clip selection it will delete this area. I am further selecting the area that is not required. clip selection so we try to bring it in the center and then again try to reduce the unwanted area as far as possible right. So, we can also now do the global meshing, global meshing means overlapping of all the different orientations data and meshing them together, meshing them means putting them together, mesh would be separate. It has now collected the whole data and the global meshing has now been taken. So, they are different colors I will just let you know what are these colors mean from green to red it is showing different colors and it is also showing the gray areas here. Global optimization it is the global alignment I will say ok then we, I come to the comet menu bar and again I start rotary measurement. Now, in this case we have changed the orientation of the object because in the previous scan there are certain portions which were not clear. So, in the second orientation we have started the scanning again. It is now showing successful. Successful means the previous scan and the recent scan that has been taken both the orientations are matching. the previous scan and the recent one is being compared so this is kept at an angle so millions of these points are there that depict an object shape on a computer screen so, these are only referred as the point clouds. As I said the capacity of the camera is 5 megapixel that is 5 million points each second which are extremely accurate to 0 0.0005 inches. See the two points are matched. So, first we need to do the manual alignment as close as possible we just click two points here which we think are closer. So, the foot to, foot, uh, to select the points generally the edges the corners are taken. So, two points you can see red point on the scan uh, that was on previously in the current scan I would call it scan A and scan B. So, those are aligned 
Now, the yellow point on scan A and yellow point on scan B, these are tried to be aligned. So, we can also delete if something is not required. Now, again, red point is put here on scan A and scan B. So, we are putting another point on scan B and on scan A at the almost closest area. So, we will just let us know that how far it is. We can also see whether uh, how close the object is closer to the previous scan. So, we can see it is showing it is showing very close almost accurate. So, let us take another point third point. So, to put the third point you need to pick a place ok we can pick at this surface here at this surface at around this place ok the result is there in the lower window frame. Fine. That did not match much. So, another point is taken at a different location. So, these iterations keep on going when we try to scan something. So, there are certain iterations which are taken care and we need to scan the things uh, while taking into account the known feel of the object. Okay, this is the corner that uh, the similar corner of the previous scan. So, similarly the things keep on going. So, we are trying to match this. So, now the three points are scanned and aligned here. Fine. See, take times. It is the skill of the uh, operator, the one who is scanning that how close, how less time does he or she takes to produce the object closest to the pattern or the final object that we require. So, because this is a manual scanning but that we were trying to teach you, so it took little time. There are automatic scanning systems as well or scanning options as well which will try to take the point by itself and try to match it. So, let us now again try to scan at an angle where it is kept. The scan is key. Now, the 20 readings would be taken measurement number 2 of 20. So, all the uh, readings are being taken here. It is now showing the object that is being scanned. Now, the 20 readings in a different orientation is uh, to be taken. So, the fifth of the 20th reading is there. So, similarly the readings are being ta taken here. So, let us wait till the all readings complete. So, the fringes which are put on the object are under the software control and the camera will record this as a point cloud data. So, it is nine now into the 19th measurement of the second scan. So, I have fast forwarded it because the you have seen the real time data that was collected in the previous scan all the 15 measurements were taken. Now, it is taking the 20 19th measurement let us let it take the 20 measurements complete a 
20th measurement is going on. You can see down the CDR in the status bar. Now, there are certain softwares which help us to do the alignment or do the cleaning or the next part of the 3D scanning process, which is mesh generation, simplification, before that alignment. So, now the 20 measurements are completed here. The rotary table job is now over. Now, the extra features which are there again we can remove using the lasso tool as we did it before. So, we go to the bar data processing bar, we have uh, we have global optimization in the ribbon here and we again try to do global optimization. So, the green boundary here shows the object is in the same orientation as of the scanner. So, it is actually the surface of the rotary table. See if I put globe, globe if I start the global op optimization here, again I will apply the lasso tool while selecting it from the selection ribbon. tool to again clean it, all the unwanted points would be deleted here in a similar fashion as we did before in the previous scan. Because it is kept at the center, we are now able to do that more quickly. when I say clip, it will clip down, remove all the red area which was selected using the lasso. Lasso if you know that is a kind of uh, the uh, noose or the rope that the uh, commons used to use to get the cattle or the horses into their control. So, similarly, it is using lasso tool. So, next operation that we will we'll, uh, perform over it is mesh operation. It, uh, the mesh operation decides the quality of the scan that is taken. The quality control, design, re reverse engineering, what are you going to do? It asks about different options here. So, in this case, now we are only going to do the reverse engineering, that is, we are going to create a 3D CAD model out of the scanned object. So, we are going to create a solid model. So, we have selected reverse engineering. So, it is showing the error maximum point 110 mm. So, mean value of the error, edge length, it is showing the different parameters here. So, we will remove the unwanted areas. Now, we will go to the uh, Geomagic Design X software, where we will try to do the next operations of the reverse engineering that we will do in the next part of this lecture. So, this was the only equipment using part of the demonstration of the reverse engineering, where we tried to see what is rotary table, what scanner did we use, the parts of the equipment setup, that is rotary table, the controller, the tripod, the scanner itself and how do we use them. And when we use them, a dongle is also part of the equipment setup only. In the next part of the demonstration, we will use a design X software and we will see how do we go about to have the final 3D model. Thank you.